what we're going to do is we're going to do rectangular array. So in this case, what we're going to do is um, we're going to go to transform uh, array rectangular, like so. And so it's going to ask you, so essentially what this does, you'll see it, but it's going to ask you like how many of these do you want in the x direction. We're going to say four. How many in the y direction? We're going to say eight. Z direction, so that's up. We don't, we just want one, so we'll just hit enter. And then unit cell or x spacing. Uh, essentially, what it's going to ask you to do is to click a start point here. So in this case, I'm going to turn off center snap because it's kind of messing us up. I'm going to turn off smart track. I'm just going to kind of eyeball this, and you can see as I drag it out, it gets bigger there. So um, what I'm going to do is turn off grid snap and this, oh, look at that, 13-sided stars fit together. So, uh, of course. So that, that looks good. Um, so I just kind of drag that out. So you can see it gives us the spacing and everything. I'm going to hit enter and there are our star patterns. So I think what maybe we'll do is I'll show you a command um, that can be useful. We'll kind of revisit it, but I might as well show it to you right now as well. Uh, so we're going to use a command called transform uh, and then flow long surface because it's just, or actually, no, we'll, we'll use orient three points right now. Um, so what we're going to do is essentially we're going to Boolean difference because I don't think we've used that command yet. We're going to Boolean difference. So that's take out this star pattern from this panel here. So what we're going to do is we want to align these stars on this surface. We could move them over and rotate them. But since we know that command already and uh, want to learn something that's a little bit quicker, we'll use orient three points. So what we're going to do is we're going to select uh, all these stars. We're not going to select this outer curve because we actually don't really care about moving that. And we're going to go transform, orient, uh, orient three points. So it's going to ask for a reference point. So reference point number one, we're going to click this bottom corner here. Reference point number two, we're going to click that point there. Reference point number three, up there. And now it's going to ask for three target points. So these are the corresponding points on the geometry. And since we know that these are the same, so this is the outline of that uh, surface here, they're going to line up perfectly. You can use this command, like we could line it up one, two, three up there. It wouldn't stretch the stars, but it would make sure that they were uh, on the same plane as the top of this surface. But we're going to select these three target points, so one, two, and three. And now you can see our stars are on our platform. Uh, so now we're going to use a command called uh, Boolean uh, subtraction, or Boolean difference, sorry. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to extrude these. So we're going to do the same command. So we're going to go solid, extrude planar curve, and then straight. Now, you can see that it's kind of extruding in a way that's, um, I guess, uh, the normal of this curve. So that's good. That's what we want. If you ever want to change the direction of this, you can always go, you know, up like that. If you want, go straight up. So maybe, maybe we'll do that like that for some reason. Um, so now we're going straight up like that. For this, we want both sides because when you're doing a Boolean difference, essentially you want the two geometries to totally intersect. So if we were to do a Boolean difference like this, just going up, it wouldn't totally intersect. It wouldn't do anything. Uh, so instead, we want to go both sides. And just to save us some work, we can actually go delete input. Yes, because as great as those star curves are, we don't need them anymore. So delete input, yes. Uh, 
so now if we click, you can see we have all these extruded stars. We can delete that curve as well because we don't need it. Uh, so you can see these fully intersect. We're going to click uh, this ramp here. And we are going to go to, um, so you can access it from a bunch of places. You can go to solid uh, and uh, difference down here. Or you can go to this little menu here, click the little blue arrow and go to Boolean difference. You want to select the item that you're subtracting from. Maybe I won't select every, anything to see the full command. So I'm going to Boolean difference. Of course, you can always enter in your command line. Uh, so select surfaces or poly surfaces to subtract from. We will select this ramp here. Enter to continue. So you can select more than one. Enter. Delete input. Yes. Um, so we don't want these stars anymore, but it says select surfaces or poly surfaces to subtract with. So we're going to select all these stars. <laughs> Like so, just make sure they're all selected. That looks good. And then hit enter. And sometimes when you're doing a lot of these, so in this case, uh, it's actually taking a while. Maybe I should have opted for five sided stars, but um, it should work. If Boolean difference, if it does fail, you can always break it up into smaller chunks. So in this case, I think it's taking much longer because I'm also recording at the same time. You can always hit escape to cancel, but we don't need to because there it went. So <laughs> I, I hope small children with small legs never ever think <laughs> of going into <laughs> this cabin. <laughs> but <laughs> there we go. Like we said, we're not marking you on design. <laughs> nor safety. Uh, so that's that. So that's <laughs> Boolean difference. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to make the edges and yeah, as per the theme, we'll make the edges out of like barbed wire or something. Uh, so that's good. Um, so now what we can do actually, this is something I'll show you guys, but you still need to make your drawings, but this is a handy tool to make. Essentially, we can do something called make 2D. So you're probably saying, if we look down at this view here, like, oh man, that's going to be a tough drawing to make. Um, you can trace it with pla planar snap, but you'd be a sucker. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to copy this from our front view. So that corresponds to here. I'm going to drag it over. And actually, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make another Boolean difference because we know it's covered by uh, this structure here. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just drag this and the structure. I'll copy both of these. I'm going to drag them over. So I'm going to hold Alt, drag to copy them. Bless you. If we switch to shaded, you'll see that this is covered here. I'm going to switch back to wireframe, but we're going to run a command called make2d. Uh, be careful with make2d because sometimes it as, takes as long to clean up a make2d drawing as it does to make a drawing. So I wouldn't totally suggest using it for everything. For something like this, though, it's super useful. So you select everything you want to make a 2D drawing of from the view you want to make it. That's really important. If we select top view, it's going to make this drawing. We want the front view. So and also, we'll know if you just made your 3D model and made 2D of it. There's ways to tell, so don't do that. Uh, so we're going to go to Dimension, Make 2D Drawing, Current View. And then um, you can choose so layers for Make 2D Objects. Uh, by default, it's going to make a new layer called Make 2D Visible Lines. I'm just going to put on the front view because that's the layer we want to make it on. So front view, going to hit OK. Um, so what's going to happen, you can see something happened over here. Let's look at it. It always projects into the top view, but there 
is your 2D drawing of that view. So we can delete this, like so. We can select this. So, oh yeah, that layer is locked, so we're going to unlock that layer. You'll see that none of these curves are joined, and there's there might be kind of some weird um, discrepancies. So, again, like I said, it can take a while to clean up and make look nice. We're just going to join those. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to flip this up to line up with the front view. So we're going to go to our right view. We're just going to use Gumball to move it up like so. We only need the inside stars for this. So I'm actually just going to select them. We don't even need this bottom part here. So I'm going to deselect this bottom edge like that. And then making sure project and planar is off, we're just going to move these. So transform, move. And we will move them right there. So now our drawing is updated to match with the 3D model. So does anyone have any questions about Make 2D? Yeah, we'll go over that at the end of this class. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan, and I'm sure you guys are too, of doing fast work that looks pretty good um, as easily as possible. And there, there's something like Make 2D that's not good for like proper drawings, like if you want a line weight and everything, but if you're in a rush, like you could totally fool someone and say like, yeah, I spent a long time on this. So I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, so um, I'm actually going to select all of that layer. I'm going to ungroup it and then group it again just so all these lines are grouped again and I'm going to lock that layer again. Okay, so now let's make our walls. Actually, I guess, well yeah, we'll make the walls and then the floor. Although with this cabin I would not be surprised if we left the floor like this and put spikes beneath it. So, uh, But we will do that. Um, so in this case we can have a choice between um, making, I guess, tubular planks or square planks. I'll, I'll just go for square because it seems more fitting to a cabin. Um, so essentially what I'm going to do is I am going to just take a little rectangle here. So rectangle, corner to corner. I'm going to drag it out like so. So I'm going to turn on Smart Track, snap to that, snap to this. So we're lined up in our drawing. And like that. Make sure so it's good. I almost snapped to that first dot there. If you see, like in the middle between the guideline and the edge of the geometry, almost snapped to that. But I just kind of noticed, like, wait, that's not the right thing. So just make sure you're snapping to the right thing. So there's our rectangle. And what I'm going to do is, again, our favorite command, I'm just going to go to solid, extrude planar curve, straight. Both sides will remain on since we used it last time. So I'm going to go both sides, no. Uh, and I'm just going to extrude up to here. So that is our um, wall there. And for this, I'm thinking I'm going to show you guys another command because it, it would be kind of weird. Okay, so it'd be weird if we just did something like copied over all these planks like that or even linear array. Because if we go into rendered, like it doesn't really make a difference, right? Like if you're going to model something, that's still literally just like a flat wall made of smaller pieces. Um, so what I'd do if you actually want to accentuate that kind of, I guess, wooden plank look is I would, let's just turn off these curves here. So I'm just turning off their uh, visibility. I'm going to chamfer it or fill it, one of those two. So to access those tools, you can go to solid, um, fillet edge, and then you have a few different things. So fillet, 
chamfer. We'll go to field. It's round. Chamfer is like straight blend edge. Uh, we won't worry about that right now. So we'll just go to fill it. And it asks you, so select edges to fill it. I'm going to select these two edges. And you can see it gives you a preview of how big this is going to be. Since we know our units are, this is one unit, and we look at one of these, it's maximum, I think, two units across. We know that that doesn't make sense. So if the radius is one, essentially, we're telling it, like, the, you know, fill it more than is possible with this. So what we can do is we can just uh, dial this down so we can go to zero point, let's say, two. Um, another weird thing about this is that you can see how it's not radius, it's next radius. So it's a weird command because, okay, so this is 0 0.2. If I change it to 0 0.4 and click here, you'll see it's 0 0.4. So if you want to change it mid-command, just deselect, choose the radius you want, and then go back into it like so. Hit enter. You'll see your little preview on the top. I'm going to go to shade it again. So you can see there's a little preview of our fillet right there. That looks nice. Um, and I'm going to hit enter. So now you can see we have this nice little fillet. Uh, so now, transform copy. When we look at this in rendered view, view rendered, you can see we actually get that um, nice space there and it's, it's just more convincing. So anyone have any questions on fillet? All right. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to array linear because these walls are just made up of the same component. Like I said uh, last time, most of your projects will be like any you know building made up of similar components or the same components repeated. Uh, so in this case, Maybe what we'll do is we'll just array linear. So I'm not totally sure how many items we can just count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's like about 20. We can delete the extra ones. So transform array linear. So number of items, I'll go 20. Preview, yes. Uh, so we just want to snap right there. So there is our wall. We can see we have one hanging over the edge. So that's OK. That looks good. Um, so what I'm going to do now, if we want to make the transition around this corner, here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to take these edges like this. First of all, I'm, I'm just going to mirror this wall across. So I'm going to go transform mirror. So transform mirror. So we can snap to the mid. Make sure your mid's on. So midpoint. Snap to any of the midpoints over here. So make sure copy's on. So copy, yes. And click. So now we have these two walls. And if we want to make this wall here, um, Essentially, uh, what we want to do is we want to fill these edges. Also, at this point, you're starting to get like a lot of geometry and you're starting to get views that are blocked. I'd say when your mall's starting to get like this, it's starting to be a good time to work with different layers. So maybe we'll make some sub layers to sort of continue on with this. So to make a sub layer, um, you can go to whatever layer you're working on, or it doesn't even have to be the one you're currently working on, right-click that layer and go to New Sub-Layer. And you'll see that a layer comes out, but it's uh, inset from its top layer, its parent layer. And then so you can just type, uh, you know, in this case, walls. You can color them the same as you do other layers. So I'm just going to select these walls. I'm going to change them, so like that. Uh, and let's go make a new layer for piles. So again, right-click, uh, new sub-layer, 
files, change object layer, we can make those blue. And um, this down here will call um, structure or something. Uh, so the new sub layer, so bottom, bottom, bottom struct. Like that, change object layer, and like that. Um, so that is something you can do with uh, sub layers. You can minimize them like that if you want to sort of clean up your view. And the other thing to note is uh, if you turn off the top layer, it'll turn off all sub layers. But within the sub layers, you can just turn them off and on individually. So I'm going to switch to my walls layer, like so. Um, so what we want to do, and also like sometimes it's nice for, especially when it comes time to rendering and choosing materials, sometimes it's nice to have these different colors, but when it comes down to it, this purple, at least for me, is it's harder to work with than just the good old fashioned uh, black here, because then, you know, it's higher contrast. So just be aware of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fillet these edges as well, just so we have that nice transition around the corner. So I'm going to go to solid, fillet edge, fillet edge. You can see that our radius is the same from the last time we did this command, so 0 0.2. I can just click there. I can click on that one, hit enter, hit enter. And you can see now it's filled on this edge as well. Uh, and then I'm just going to take these here. Actually, I might even just take a couple of them like so. And I will, what I'll do is I will, um, okay, this is something else you can do. So when you're moving something, so for example, and I'm going to turn off these other layers so we can see better. So for example, if we wanted to move this corner here to, to line it up, you can see that it hits the corners of the adjacent log. If we want to move it to a point that used to be here but is now filleted, does anyone have any idea of how we could do that accurately? So move this point to a point that used to be there. There was uh, no clue at all in that question. So uh, essentially what you can do is you can uh, reference uh, a point behind it. So in this case, rather than moving it from the point itself on this corner, what we can do is we can go to transform copy. And rather than moving from right here, again, turn off smart track, we don't need it. We can move it from this point here. You can move from any point. So in this case, if we move from the point behind it, you can see that our little cursor, our crosshair there is behind our geometry. We don't move to this point that used to be there. We move to this point there. And then you can see that that still works really quite well. Um, if we need to rotate this around a point that's not there anymore. So in a world where, you know, if we hadn't filled in that edge, we'd actually rotate it around that point. Well, I guess we can still rotate it around this point, but you can also use smart track. So I was going to say you can smart track from here here to find this intersection point, but you can also just rotate it uh, around there. Um, and actually, I don't, I don't think that's even right. So what we actually do is move to there and then rotate. So sometimes you move geometry around a lot. Uh, did that make sense to any of you guys? It like didn't make sense to me. I moved to the wrong point, essentially. But, you know, move things, rotate them, uh, play around with it. So I, I moved and rotate in summation. And uh, I'm just going to copy these planks over. So transform copy, again, to make sure they stay on the same plane. Uh, we're going to turn on project and uh, planar. Just going to copy them over. So we're in the top view right now. 
it looks like we only need two more of these. So I'll deselect three. So I was holding control there and dragging from the bottom right. And now I'm going to copy in the final two like that. So you can see now we have our nice wooden filled walls uh, view uh, rendered. See how it looks? Now we don't have a front. And that's just because since this thing is like way far gone to look like respectable architecture, we'll have fun with that. So uh, we can sort of learn some more things. Uh, but we will add in that back window and we'll add something in the front as well after this. Uh, so I'm just going to save this um, just in case. So let's turn on our other layers. So one thing to notice when you're in rendered mode, so right now I'm in view rendered, the layer colors don't display. Instead, what displays is your rendered colors. So that's different. We'll get into that later, but it's something to be aware of. So that's where we are now. What we want to do is we want to work on that window. Since it's kind of close to everything right now, I'm just going to grab this view and move it out like that. And what we're going to do is since we know we want to um, essentially make this hole in these walls, I'm just going to ungroup this like so. I'm going to grab this outer uh, opening here, and I'm going to go to Solid, Extrude Planar Curve, Straight. Uh, we don't want to delete our drawing, so we want to make sure that Delete Input is set to No. And you can drag it however far out. You just want to make sure that it totally intersects with the uh, geometry you want to subtract from. So that looks good. So what we're going to do is we're just going to select all of these planks which are intersected by the uh, window. So like so. And then we're going to run that same command, uh, Boolean difference. So in that case, we go our little Boolean commands here, click on the cascade little blue arrow there, select Boolean difference, select surfaces or poly surface to subtract with, so it'll be this, delete input, yes, we don't need this anymore, so I'll click that, hit enter, and there we have the beginning of our window. Um, so what we can do from here, if we want to make this line up, is we can just, rather than playing around with this curve anymore, I'm just going to set this locket again, we can just draw a curve around here and use that. So we turn off project, we turn off planar, and we're just going to grab our uh, polyline tool, and we're just going to snap to the endpoints here. So make sure you're snapping to the right thing, because sometimes in something like this, like let's say we have this point and this point super close on the screen like that, you see how it's highlighting the pink there? Even though it looks like we're snapping in the right corner, it's actually snapping down there. So just be aware of that. You can always hit Control Z mid command if you want to uh, redo the last vertex of your polyline. So we're going to snap there. We're going to snap there, there, and the fourth one again to close it. We have this line here, which we can offset. So in this case, we can go to our front view we can go to curve, offset, offset curve. And for our distance, if we turn on project and planar, we can snap the distance from going to any of these points, holding down shift to snap here. And you can see our distance is the same as our drawing. So that's good. Distance one, I'll click to end the command. We now have this second line there, and then we can use this to drag it out. So since we can't see that window in the other drawing, we're going to assume it's flush with this. So we can just go solid, extrude planar curve, straight, and extrude it to this endpoint here. So that gives us our nice windowsill like that. Um, so does anyone have questions about 
that processor? It, it's more or less like all these commands were just doing more or less the same, like extrude curve, uh, planar curves. With with that one command, you can do so many things. Um, so now I guess we should add a floor to this um, or not. Like we can just leave it for now. Uh, instead, why don't we add the inner structure and then deal with the roof as well? So I'm going to make a new sub layer. So, uh, so new sub layer, we'll call this front wall. Since this isn't in the drawings, we're going to do something kind of different just to, I don't know, make it look different. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to play around with some of the transform commands. So twist, bend, taper, stretch. Mostly we'll just use twist just so you can see how that goes. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make some wrought iron uh, bars or something. Um, so we'll just start by making a little base here. So I'm going to turn off planar and object snap, uh, or not object snap, sorry. Um, okay. And we're just going to snap like so. If you want to um, uh, determine the length of your rectangle in something like this, uh, you could like, if we know this distance now is two, we could enter two, but again, smart tracks your good friend in this. If we want to snap to this plank, snap right here, drag it out. Oops. Find the intersection. Like so. So I'm just going to extrude this up again, extrude planar curve. Uh, for this, I'm just going to enter in two. So our units, I don't even know what they are. I think they're millimeters, so this house is tiny. We'll worry about units later. So I'm going to enter two. Hit that. I'm going to mirror this. So again, sort of same commands we've been using. So mirror, midpoint, hold shift to make sure it's uh, mirroring straight along this axis. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I guess in my mind because of this and the fact that this house is going to just look so imposing um, and I want to use twist, I thought of like wrought iron bars. So I think eventually, essentially we're making some sort of strange medieval jail house. So We'll just keep going with that. Oh, I'll show you guys how to make cones too, so we can put them underneath. Uh, so I'm just going to move these up. So I'm going to transform, copy, move up like that. And so there's our front wall um, without the little thing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to make a little square. So in this case, so rectangle corner to corner. I'm, I'm just going to hold shift. If you hold shift while you're making a rectangle, it's going to make sure it's a square. Um, so I'm just going to hold that, hold shift, make sure it's however wide, doesn't really matter. Uh, transform move, move to mid. And then what I'm going to do is, let's say you want to make something, you know, have exactly uh, eight of these things across the entire length of this uh, bar here. Um, the way you can do that is you can array along curve, but what you need to realize is if you array along a curve, so I started with the end here, and I, I draw a line like that. If I array along this curve, what's going to happen is, so transform array along curve, I, I'll select that curve, number of items, Let's go six. You can see that there's one missing and what's happening is it's there. And the reason why it's there is that it's saying, okay, this curve's first point on this curve is the very beginning. So this is the reference point. 
So in that case, it's the same reference point here that needs to be on the end. So what you can do in that case is you can just take this, trim a curve, so that curve. So the reference point is the end of this square here. And now we, we go transform array along curve number of item six. You can see it goes like that. So what we're going to do with these bars is I'm just going to show you some different commands that you can use. So each one's going to be different um, to make for a very ornate set of, I guess, bars. So the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is use twist. So I'm going to again go back to our favorite solid extrude planar curve straight. I'm going to drag it up to here like so. And maybe I'll turn off these uh, walls. Oh, I was on the wrong layer. So I'm, I'm just going to change all these things to uh, our front wall layer. Okay, so front wall, change object layer, set that to the default layer, turn off walls, so now we can see a little bit better. We also don't need these drawings. So I have this here. Essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to transform twist. So start of twist access, um, we can go to the center here. So we want to snap to the center so it twists along the center. So we'll turn on center snap. Uh, sometimes it is kind of finicky. Let's turn off smart track. If for some reason center snap still isn't working, what you can do, turn off center snap, make sure mid's on, go to smart track, snap to the mid, the mid there, and then it'll grab that intersect. And then what we can do is we can go up here and do the same thing. So snap to mid, mid, and then mid intersect. So now, so first angle or reference point we can um, go to, let's say, uh, maybe we'll just work on it like this. We're just going to fold out like this is our first angle. So I hit my left mouse button. And then now you can see if, as I drag this around, if you've seen that window, it's starting to twist. So we can twist this as many times as we want. Um, rigid, let's, I guess, no infinite. I don't know what that means. Twist is kind of a weird command that eh, you might use, I guess. Um, but why don't we try... Uh, I guess if we want this really twisty, maybe it's better to go with that first option. So just adding in the angle. So let's do that again. So mid, mid. Um, if, we, if we turn on project and planar like that, we don't even have to um, snap to mids again. We can just hold up, snap to the top like that. So angle or first reference, let's go uh, 1800. And there we have a really twisty bar. Um, so that actually will probably look kind of cool in rendering. So that's how you do twist. Um, so now let's look at another strange uh, transformation you can do with solids. Um, this transformation, so I'm going to do the same thing, grab the curve, go to solid, extrude planar curve straight, I'm going to extrude up to this part. Um, so I turned off project so I could pull it all the way up there. Uh, this one, I think what I'm going to do is I will go to bend. So in this case, um, your bending point, you need to select a, its uh, spine. So we're going to start the spine here and the spine. So it's not going to be a very effective jail if that's what we're going for, if we're like bending the bars. But we'll just slightly bend it this way to give prisoners enough hope that it's like so close but so far. <laughs> OK, so like. Ah, like that. Okay. So that is Ben. You can do that. The other one we can do straight is taper. 
and of course uh, transform taper so start taper axis we probably want to snap to the middle like this uh, so like so we can do the same thing make sure it projects on so we can just go straight down in this view and uh, start distance we can just click right here end distance you can see it kind of makes that weird taper like that um, so now you can see it's kind of falling out of the uh, range of this base here so we can just use gumball for a really uh, you know quick maneuver if your studio project looks like this anyways you're clearly past the point of giving a shit so you don't have to model accurately uh, so there we go I uh, like that but now we're going to talk about some maybe more useful commands um, so in this case another thing you can do is um, under solid tools actually it's under surface tools we won't really talk about surfaces as much till next week but this will be useful to know in the meantime um, what we can do if we go to the middle here again we want to make sure that everything's kind of snapped to the right place and we use our control point curve so I'm going to turn off project snap to the midpoint using our smart track like so I'm going to go into my front view and turn on project so we make sure that we're always in line with that midpoint and now I'm just going to draw like a weird curve maybe I'll just draw it straight like that at first go like that also be aware that if you go super wild with this curve it actually you might start getting some weird intersecting geometry uh, so um, so I guess it doesn't really matter where I am because it's really weird already so like that so we have this curve now uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a command under surface uh, called uh, sweep one rail. So essentially, we're going to take this and, uh, well, I'll click out of that. So we're going to go surface, sweep one rail, and it's going to say select rail, that guy there, select cross-section curves, this one, hit enter. And you can see it follows that. You can also use loft for this. In this case, it's more or less the same thing. And we'll get into this more in surfaces, but feel free to explore these. So why don't we do this with loft? Do the same thing. So we can go surface, loft, select curves to loft, uh, enter. Oops. No, it doesn't work like that. Sorry, I was mistaken. Um, so yeah, sweep one rail is your thing to go. So surface, sweep one rail, select cross section curves, enter. Uh, make sure you're selecting the right things or else you're going to get something weird like that. So select cross section, uh, okay, select rail, select cross section curves, enter, enter. Um, you can play around with these for this. We can just leave on freeform. And there we have our weird bar. Um, one thing to notice about this, I'm just going to hide this top thing here. So we haven't really talked about the differences between surfaces and uh, solids too much. But you can see here that this is open where these are closed. A quick way to close uh, a poly surface like this is to go to solid um, cap planar holes. And if it has planar holes, you can see it'll just cap them. So a very descriptive command. So that it's exactly like that. Um, so that's more or less just the way you convert to a solid. And the reason why you want to convert it to a solid a lot of the times is that the Boolean unions, differences, whatnot, will kind of have probably the different effect than you want them to have if you're working with surfaces. Surfaces are great for some things, uh, but salts are also great for things as well. And I guess to finalize this last bar, we will uh, you know just extrude it because I, I think that gives you guys a pretty good idea of all the strange things you can do for now so that is that 
Uh, what style would you say this is, guys? I'd say it is horrible. Uh, okay, and then so I'm just going to mirror this because symmetry is important in architecture like this. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Nice. So <laughs> let's look at our masterpiece. <laughs> we haven't even gone to the roof yet. <laughs> um, oh, we actually we got rid of these though. I remember that. So we can redo that for some reason. That was lost. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make this little uh, roof cover. Um, so I think what we'll do here is we'll just assume these are lateral supports. Um, at this point, like obviously there's no real supports in here, so we can add them in after. But just for the ease of doing this, I'm going to go, um, I'm going to take this layer here. I'm going to unlock it. I'm going to ungroup it so we can work with the geometry. And I'm just going to... Uh, extrude this geometry out. So I'm going to start with these I beams. I'm going to go to solid, extrude planar curve straight, like so. So I'm just snapping to this upper corner here. Oh no, don't want to snap to that one. Just going to snap to this one down here. So I'm going to snap to that midpoint there. Make sure it's flush. So there are our nice I beams. And then also, for some strange reason, we have uh, some sort of uh, line here. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to say that these are uh, something that's welded to the I-beam. So in this case, I'm going to go solid, extrude planar curve straight. I'm going to extrude them to that point right there. So it's always solid, extrude planar curve straight. And then what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to select them and I'm going to Boolean difference them. I'm going to go back to shade. So geometry like this, like Rhino allows you to have it when two geometries overlap like this. But it's going to give you some weird problems when you're drawing and it's also kind of messy. But if you're in a rush, this is okay. So I'm going to Boolean difference. This may or may not work because it's sharing a lot of sides, but we'll see. So I'm going to right-click the Boolean there, go to Boolean Difference, select this I-beam, delete input. No, we don't want to delete the input this time. Hit Enter. So that works. So we have these three pieces here. Again, do the same thing here. So I'm just going to right-click to rerun the command. So make sure delete inputs no. Select this I-beam like that. And then we're just going to mirror these pieces we just made. We don't have to mirror those curves, though. So, um, oh, actually, this is, I'll show you guys this right now. If you put, click on filter like this, I think we covered this on the very first class, but if you click on filter, this is super useful. I actually don't know why it's not up here for me right now. Click on filter. You'll see this little selection filter pop up. And this is super useful. Um, most of the times, I actually just leave it up here because I use it quite a bit. So let's say right now I want to select these three objects like that. You can see I'm also selecting this curve. I know I don't want to select this curve. Uh, um, so in this case, what you can do is you can just turn off curves like this, like so. And then now, even if I do kind of a very quick selection, I'm not very careful about it, it will not select that curve. So selection filter is really useful, especially as you get a lot more geometry uh, in your project. So in this case, we're just going to mirror these. So transform mirror. Um, we're going to snap to mid. Holding shift again, pulling out. So we have that. Uh, so. In this case, like, this is by far not enough lateral support for this structure, but um, that's okay, I guess. Um, but we can 
add that in later if need be if we have time. I will show you one thing just because it's kind of fun. So we can put some sort of fun thing right here. Um, essentially, what I'm going to do here is we probably want to connect these. So I'm just going to draw polylines. So you can see that I'm starting to have a lot more things to snap to. So this is why it's important to try to leave off as many snaps as possible. I'm even going to turn off Smart Track. So I'm going to snap to the end there. Make sure so when you snap something, you can see how that gets bold. And that's how I know I'm snapping the right thing. I'm going to hold up. Um, in this case, I can turn on Project uh, Planner, turn on Smart Track, go to this view here. So we know that that's the right point. I can snap to that point there. We know that's the right point. Snap to, oh, that's not the right point. Snap to this point right here. So just keep looking in your different views. Make sure you're doing this right. That's the right point. And now we can snap to this final point. So. That's the curve we want. Uh, so I can't select this right now because curve selection's off. So I'll turn that back on. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to go solid, extrude planar curve straight, like that. And then what we're going to do for this lovely abode is to make just like a, um, I guess, welcome placard, sort of the date this manner was established. Uh, so we can go into view shaded because right now it's just kind of hard to see. The other thing you can do is so we know that our front view is coming from this side. But if we want to look at it from the other way, you can always click this little arrow here next to front. And then if you go to set view, you can go to back. So now we're in what for us is the back, but it's actually the front. Um, and you can switch this back at any time. So this is a fun tool. You can see the text object here. Um, it's going to give you like this, uh, by default says Rhino. You can use like any typeface that you have loaded in. So I do have Joker Man. <laughs> uh, so Villa, uh, I'll call it. Media. So we made it surfaces, and now what we can do is we can drag this down like this. And here's another thing you can do. So we have been working on extruding curves, right? The other thing you can do, you can take a surface like this. Okay, so here's this view in, oh, it's actually a solid. Um, but you can also extrude a surface if you want as well. So you can go to solid, extrude surface straight. Since this is already a solid, we're just going to use the gumball. We're going to uh, drag it out. We're going to make sure it intersects. I'm going to save. And we will Boolean difference with this. Actually, maybe maybe we want to, no, we'll Boolean difference. It'll create a nice shadow on the inside. Delete input, yes. And look at that. If you want to be extra realistic, these you know, would actually not work in real life, so you can get them out of it. It does compensate the integrity of the wonderful design of Joker Man, the font, but that's okay. Okay, so fill the media. And so the final thing we can do um, here is with this roof, we want to change this because these two curves here are. Um, maybe a little bit too wild for our design. So we want to just uh, remove them. So just a review what we did last time. We took these curves here. Um, I'm pretty sure we exploded them. 
So I'm just typing exploded. You can also hit this little explosion there. Hit enter. Oh, explode. And then I'm going to deselect the curves I don't want. Like that. Like that. And then I'm going to hit join. So right there, or you can just type J or J-O, and it'll come up. Um, so now we just have these two curves. I'm going to select these curves that we don't want. And we've already updated the drawing here for this, so I'm not sure why we didn't save that, but that's okay. So we're just going to extend these curves. So we're going to go to curve, extend curve by line. Um, want to turn off project, like so, like so, and we can join. And we're sure that this is a nice closed curve because it says so up here. If you're not sure if your curve is closed and it's giving you weird uh, results when you are trying to extrude as a solid, you can always go into your properties tab and check that it's a closed curve. If it's an open curve, it'll tell you, and then you need to go find the little opening. So finally for this, um, we are going to make our roof. So in this case, we don't want to um, get rid of this here, so I'm just going to make a copy of it. So I'm going to turn on project, planers on, I'm going to go transform copy, and I'm just going to go to this point, hold shift to this intersection point there, and what we're going to do is we're going to select this, again solid, extrude planar curve straight, and go like that. And there we are. Um, I guess for the sake of the assignment, I will set a good example and add a floor. But the floor, so the floor is simply, because I want to show you guys some quick presentation methods. The floor will just be like that. So that's good. Mm, whatever. Okay, floor. Uh, so this is our nice um, villa. So now what we can do, so there's a few things you can do here. So um, essentially, if we look at the previous, let's just choose one of these. I think this is the last one we were looking at. Uh, nope. That one, you can do weird, like cool things like that, but let's look at this one. Yeah. So, how would you make a drawing like this? So, there's a few different ways. Um, you can essentially make 2D of everything if you really want, but that might take quite, quite a while. Um, you're going to have to line weight some things. So essentially what I would do is I'd set up that composition in 3D. And what I mean by that is I'd select, let's say, the side view. I'd group as one object. Um, I'd group the front view as one object. And then if you go into your perspective, go to set view, isometric, northeast, You can still use the view. You can now see that it is in parallel projection. And we're starting to get into that view that we just saw here. So there's our object, there's our views. Um, so what I'd do with this is perhaps I would select all of these once you have it set up and you'll have the roof up here and everything. I would select all of these. I would go to Dimension, Make 2D Drawing, Current View. So, um, and let's make a new layer so we can, uh, so new layer, we can call it 2D Drawing. So I'll run that command again. Dimension, Make 2D Drawing, uh, Visible Lines, we're going to put it on 2D Drawing, hit OK. And it'll just take a second to do this. So 
So if you have really complex things, it'll take a while, but there are drawings down here. So one important thing, and maybe you should do this even before you did that step, is you can save views in Rhino, which comes in, it's really handy. So in this case, if we like this view, let's say we add something more out here, something here, like it was just kind of a nice centered view. Um, what we could do is we could click on this little arrow here. We can go to set view, name views, and then you can click save as. So in this case, we'll go to save as, click it, and we'll just say axo view, like so. So now it's saved. So even if you move around, oh, if you go back to set view, you'll see your saved view right there. Click and it'll return. So you'll see why that's super handy. So essentially what we have here is we we have some, we have essentially some line drawings. Um, so these you can export to Illustrator to line weight. So the way you export to Illustrator is you just select these and you go export selected save as type AI you can also if you want to do something in AutoCAD with it like DWG or DXF works fine as well AI save as whatever whatever hit enter um, now if you're working with an actual scale and you're making a scale drawing of course then this is important right um, you want to go 100 millimeters to 1 if you're doing, you know, like 1 to 100. Um, but for, in our case, we can actually just go snapshot of current view, like so. And it'll just make a, a view of that. One important thing to remember, and this is like one of the number one, uh, you know, uh, problems that people have with this export to Illustrator, is they'll export to Illustrator and their geometry will be like way outside of the artboard. So what you want to do if you do that, if you open Illustrator, you open your file, your drawing is nowhere to be seen. In Rhino, just like, let's say I'm way out here. In Rhino, what you want to do is you want to just go transform, move, put it somewhere in the center of your geometry and move the point to zero. And that's essentially what's happening there. So essentially, Illustrator is taking Rhino's zero point, is it its own zero point, and positioning the geometry in relation to that. So just be aware of that. Um, in Illustrator, you can see that now you have your line drawing. And you can just you know, uh, do whatever you want in the Illustrator. Uh, one thing, and we sort of touched on it last class, is that you can set layers for different line weights in Rhino. So like heavy, medium, light, super light if you want. Uh, in Illustrator, it retains the Rhino layers. So I really haven't worked with layers for that purpose in this. But you can see that 2D drawing is the 2D drawing layer uh, in Rhino as well. So if I exported, you know, all four of these layers, all four layers would show up in Illustrator, and that's really useful because, of course, if you have, so let's say this was my light layer, if you have more than one layer in Illustrator, so I'll draw on this layer. So essentially, let's say this is my light layer, this is my medium layer, you can just click this little circle and set all your line widths to be the same. So it's super fast to do. Um, don't want to go like that, but you know what I'm saying. So point five. the other thing you can do, and this is like the super fast thing I was telling you about, is you can so let's go back to our Axo view. Let's hide, let's just delete these for now. And again, you guys for this assignment, you're required to lay down line weights and we'll, we can see in your PDF file whether or not that 
having but so just use this to line it up but for your main part here you can absolutely use this technique because it's super useful um, essentially what you can do is so we saved our view you can set your view to rendered for instance and with these curves here um, we can go to properties display color by layer we can set it to let's say black for our purposes the other thing we can do here is we can go to display and under background we can set it to solid color so right now it's gray but we can set it to be white like so and now what we can do with this is we can have type this command which is super useful you want to go hyphen view capture to clipboard so don't just go view capture to clipboard it won't give you as many commands hyphen view capture to clipboard write that down it's super useful hit enter now what this allows you to do is it copies your screen to the clipboard minus the grid so grid draw draw grid no draw world axes no draw C plane no except it allows you to scale it up so you can get a really really nice looking render right from within Rhino so in this case let's go to scale let's say four hit enter make sure you don't change your view Opo, open Photoshop go to new it'll automatically set as the uh, size of your Rhino file on the clipboard which is nice hit OK and then control V or edit paste and you can see there is our file in high resolution so just a nice little uh, thing like that now what you can do is if you want to let's say go into Rhino and go to view pen uh, turn off this horrible background so again in display background go to solid color again I can view capture to clipboard oh except we want the solid color to be white so I can view capture to clipboard the scale remains make sure these stay the same and the reason why you want this and the view to stay the same is that now when you paste into Photoshop put history there um, it lines up perfectly so now if we uh, turn this layer that I just pasted into let's say multiply you can see if we darken it up so image adjustment levels let's like increase the black um, like so I guess image adjustment brightness contrast reduce brightness you can see that now it makes a line drawing and you can do other cool things with this as well so let's say you wanted to show hidden lines in here you can go back into Rhino in the same view go to wireframe um, select all of these just so they're black um, properties display color set to black so it's all black under display background solid color set it to white do the same you capture the clipboard and now in Photoshop edit paste hit multiply and lighten up the opacity and now you're starting to have kind of an idea of this or else what you could do as well as you know maybe hide the roof do this and you can just start layering these and just by layering you can start to do some really interesting things another thing I personally really love doing if you want that kind of Wes Jones high contrast look is take your shaded layer go to image adjustments levels and just totally get rid of all the contrast and now you have you know what looks like almost you know like a graphic novel style 
uh, illustration or like Wes Jones or Deal, Neil Denari, guys like those. So uh, that is more or less it. So play around with those presentation methods. If you want to try something else, that's great. If you have any questions, uh, ask her or me and I'll be around on Sunday at noon in this room. So last weekend, I was so lonely in here. So if you guys have questions, I'll be around.